boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on out there today? Another episode of the world famous gold ball hunting podcast. Yes. That dude over there, Jeff Jacklich, I'm Brent Abel, and this is episode number 222. Boom. 222. Two. In a row. Every day. Last 222 days. Here we go. It's a Friday. Everyone getting ready for the weekend, man, you know, putting on the looking good, getting the duds all lined up in the closet there, (laughs) going to go out and do a little dance tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, though, we got we got a little uh, some more stories Uh, to share about about singles matches that uh, really kind of were moments in the match or afterwards, which were kind of epiphany moments, those big aha moments that that Jeff and I came away uh, with that sort of layered another maybe smaller or sometimes a bigger layer of confidence on top of our ability to uh, to play at a higher level in in singles. Yeah. And some of those epiphanies, Jeff, I mean, one of the things we talk about, really the whole premise of this podcast is to help players reduce their skill level range. <clears throat> one day, great. Hey, babe. Woo, should have seen me out there today. Wow. Okay, honey. Yeah, you, you, were, you, were, you were the man, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah you know, the whole thing. Next day, you go out there. Uh, up here? No. Actually, we're down here. We're kind of down here. I, I got here. nothing. I got yeah, nothing. Yeah, you go home. Yeah. You don't say a word. Yeah. And, yeah. you yeah. know, the spouse goes, not so great today, huh, babe? Yeah. Not so great. No, man, I can't figure this <laughs> thing out. One day good, one day lousy. So... We're trying to help you reduce that skill level range. And the way we do it is, you know where your, where your top is. Unfortunately, you know too often where the bottom is down here. And right. we're going to help you bring the bottom up to the top on a consistent basis. So maybe you don't play at the very tip top of your skill range each and every time you play, but pretty darn close. And once you get that feeling when you go out to play that, you know what, I got a pretty good idea. I'm going to be within 10% maybe of my top skill level range or level that's yeah. that's when you build confidence man that's where you build it singles or doubles so um yeah that's what we're doing i can't remember how i got in that tangent but anyway i got on it yeah. so <laughs> so anyway well, well no i remember is that you know is that the epiphanies the aha moments that we have in our yeah. singles matches i think help reduce that skill level range Oh, totally. When you when you actually get clarity on something that before you know you weren't clear on, it doesn't. And and again, this isn't all about winning every match. You know, you lose matches, you lose sets, and then you know sometimes the loss of a set. You know, today's story for me is going to be losing the first set uh, in two matches, and the clarity of, of reorganizing. You know, and and getting back to it. You know, and um, and pulling off the wins. So well, so speaking of your story. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So, um, you, you know, the listeners have heard, you know, this, this, uh, on, on, because it relates to a number of different topics. Um, uh, but Berkeley, uh, quarters and semis, uh, I think 2016 or so. Um, and, uh, quarterfinal match, lose the first set. And, um, I'm just, I'm just a little ahead of what's going on on the finish, you know, setting up the pattern right, using the right pattern, but then being a little bit maybe over, over eager or just a little anxious on the finish and missing, missing the finish. So playing, playing the court, uh, playing the margins way too tight and, um, you know, losing the first set. And of course, <clears throat> all my cronies are, you know, watching this happen. And so I got to battle that down. That, you know, well, let me ask like, you this. All right, so you know, I'm, I'm going I'm to interrupt you. And, you know, the guys up in the deck are just wannabes anyway. They're just going, God, look at that Jeff Jacklich out there. Yes, he's missing some balls. Oh, goody. No. Um, <laughs> so you just mentioned, and this happens to me frequently too, when I, when I kind of come out of the starting blocks. You know, I don't know what it is. Either it's on one end of the scale, I'm a little nervous, and I'm feeling like, you know, I got to play pretty well today. So right. I start going, playing a little bit too close to the lines or other times I go out there feeling I got this and I start playing too close to the lines and the results the same on both ends of that thing. Right. Where it's right. like, well, great. You think you got it or whatever, but here's the harsh reality. You better bring it in a little bit. 
Right. Rain it in a little bit. Yes. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So um, anyway, so I lose the first set 6-4 um, on the changeover. Um, I'm a little frustrated to say the least. Um, and um, but I get I get my you know my mind corralled and I just sit there quietly um, kind of head down a little bit, just, you know, staying, getting visually, because one of the big keys too, when, when you need to get some straight thinking in your head is you can't be looking around. You ha you have to get your visual focused on something, either look at your racket or put a towel over your head, something to stop the visual distraction. So, um, so that was one aspect of it. And then I just, I just realized, I said, you know, you're just going to have to do the work today. And the work that day was two patterns. That's all. And the way I the way I mentally um, kind of framed it for myself to know that there was I, there was no need for me to be anxious about finishing once I set the pattern up and had the ball to finish on is that I just I moved my margin a little bit on the finish ball and just decided that okay today might take an extra ball or two and if I have to restart reboot the pattern again because the rally is going longer then so be it I'll do that. And that was really what I did. And so it was two basic patterns I used for the next two sets. Um, nothing flashy, very journeyman, and I won the next two sets, two and two. Um, and then basically an absolute repeat the next day in the semis. Lose the first set, feeling frustrated because I, I thought, okay, today, yesterday was a day, but today's going to be a little better, going to be smoother. Set everything up and, okay, nope, apparently it's Groundhog Day. And, uh, Deja and, vu all over yeah. again. Yeah. And so I had to do it again. And yeah. I just, again, you know, just, you know, the two patterns I wanted to use, same two patterns that I used the day before. Again, it wasn't rocket science. And um, just realized that I'm going to have to hit the extra ball or two. And when I got to those extra ball or two, I didn't then go, okay, now I can change the margin. Nope. I just stayed, you know, conservative hit that ball where you need to hit it, go to the next spot you're supposed to go to, and then do it again. And when I kind of took took that off the plate and, and also said, you know, you're going to be out here a while today. It's going to take a little more time today to get the job done. And that also kind of, you know, reduces the stress factor in not feeling anxious about, I want to hurry up and get out of here. I just made peace with myself and said, you know what? Today's going to take a little more time. And so be it. And so again, I won. I won the next two sets, two and two. Um, literally, and, and literally really, a repeat performance. Absolutely, same scores. Yeah, right. And it was really for me the epiphany that came out of that was, you know, every day is a little different in a tournament. It doesn't always flow this smooth transition where you're just crescendoing at the finals on Sunday. You know, some days you're going to have to, you know, crawl through the sewer. It's just going to be a tough day. And it doesn't mean that you're necessarily – I wasn't hitting the ball poorly. It's just for some reason I was just ahead of myself when I saw the finish. I got I got ahead of it and just yanked it a little bit and said, okay, here we are. Um, so it, it's – you know, the skill set level range wasn't necessarily, you know, like here the day before and then down here. It, w it was – I was still hitting the ball well, but I just had to reorganize my thought process and, and change – my acceptance of the fact that I'm going to have to, it's going to take a few more balls today, every point. Right. Right. Good. Well, look, um, you know, that's, uh, that's almost like a tough epiphany, a tough aha moment to have to sort of accept is yeah. that we kind of think, well, geez, I, I want to be able to go out here today and bring my best stuff because that's where I have the most fun. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But the reality of that happening is, is, it's not going to happen very often. In fact, most of our tennis that we play could be classified as mediocre, right? right. We don't we don't play at the skill level range up here like each and every point. Where no. you know you're doing a 360 and you're waving at the crowd and you're doing some kind of weird stuff and you know zoroing the next little volley over there. I mean, just doesn't work like that. So. Um, I've got you. It work that go. way. And there, and I can tell you this too, you know, I, I can tell you this too. There was nothing fun about it. Yeah. I mean, literally at the end of the matches, both matches, I was, I was proud of myself for having corralled my thought process and focus and been able to, and, and did the work right. and came up with the victory on both those very proud of myself for doing it. But I didn't feel like, Hey, that was really 
that was really great that I pulled that off. Yeah. No, yeah. like I said, I was proud of myself, but there was nothing fun about it. And this is what I think, you know, in relating to, you know, we, we did the launch, you know, um, we've launched our, our course and just, just throwing that in there is that that's what this is. This is about understanding the, the, the place that you, you need to know. So you have something tangible to get your mind focused on to be able to just do the work today because yeah. today is going to be one of those days. It's going to take a little extra effort, but if you don't know what to focus on, if you don't know what to do, then you're out there just kind of flapping in the wind. And so, you know, our course is going to help you get defined in what, what, you know, what well, to do. Look, I mean, and, and, and thank you, Jeff, for bringing that up, which is a nice segue for me to promote this new course that we've got today is Friday. And, uh, uh, we've got an offer out there that includes the master class for seven gold ball winning plays. And just like Jeff said, you know, this is not stuff that's that's regularly used in the tour. There might be some of the plays that are used in the tour, but that's a kind of a little bit different level from the rest of us. But these are plays that actually seven plays that um, that I've used to win national titles. I've seen lots of other guys and gals used to win national titles. And uh, they have nothing to do with stroke technique. And I think so often players go out there and they think, well, this is about if I can hit the ball a little cleaner, a little better, a little bit more spin, do a little bit more with the ball, that's going to equate to the win. And that right. could not be any further from, from, from the truth. So uh, I want to remind you guys, today is Friday. We, we've got this insane offer, which um, – if you're over at YouTube, the link is down below uh, the video. If you're at uh, iTunes, uh, I guess we could just send them over to Gold Ball Hunting and there will be a, a link there. But if not, yeah. um, it just, just jump on our, e on, our, uh, on our email list and, um, and you'll get the link to be able to go look at, look, just at least look at the offer and see, and see what, what we've, <coughs> uh, to see what we've got. And the thing ends this Sunday at uh, 11 p.m. Pacific, yeah. and then it goes back to its retail price. So listen, I want to tell you a story about uh, a match where I had a huge epiphany moment, and um, I wish I'd had the seven plays, the seven <laughs> gold ball winning plays at that point in my playing career. This was, uh, this was actually 10 years ago, and um, I was playing in Perth in Australia after the team event down there, playing in the individual World Cup. And playing in the quarters against a good guy, an Australian guy. And that morning, we had a 9 o'clock match that, well, that evening it had rained. And we were playing on the artificial grass, right? We were playing the artificial grass at Richardson Park in Perth, Australia. And uh, I felt like they sent us out there a little bit too early. I didn't think it was totally dry. And the guy yeah. said, well, if you don't want to go, fine. But we'll default you if you don't go on out there. And I said, hey, well, thanks for looking out for my safety, by the way. Um, right. <laughs> so I go out there and 10 years ago, which now doesn't seem like that long ago, I was only serve and volley. I was only chip and charge. And if I got stuck back in the baseline, you could hit a ball that was going to land that far from the baseline. And I go, oh, this is an approach out opportunity. That Big looks time. like an approach. Yeah. I'm it landed in inside the that. baseline. Right. In fact, I had to volley <laughs> it on top of the baseline because it might have just missed. Um, and so the very first point of the match, you know, I smartly say, well, on a, on a, on a wet plastic grass court, I wouldn't have spin. I'll serve first. Sure. So first serves go in, I split step and the split just kept going. It did not stop. <laughs> I mean, I probably didn't do a total 180 with the legs going out, <laughs> but I'm sure that the, uh, some circus was looking at me going, Hmm, you might be right. a candidate for us. Um, and I just realized I'm screwed, um, because I did not have a baseline game, which sounds right. ludicrous, right? Right. You're, 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 you're no in, backup plan, no backup plan, <laughs> you know, and just because I was still young enough where serving volley was, wow, this is so much fun and great. And, and I'd sort of, I mean, I hadn't played a lot of clay court stuff and I hadn't played a lot of right. grass court tournaments. I just played hard courts where, you know, as well as I do, Jeff, I mean, the hardcore stuff, serve and volley is like, you can be completely off balance and still 
still regain oh, yeah. your balance. It's like just cheating. And uh, so on this day, I could not, I could not do that. And, um, you know, I tried staying back and I, I lost to this guy who, you know, I'm not going to beat him every time, but I think if I play him 10 times, maybe, you know, I should, I should win five out of five. I would, I mean, five out of 10, I think. Anyway, right. I'm not, but so I lose the match and I leave Australia going, I have got to learn how to be able to rally like two or three balls from the baseline. <laughs> It's crazy a, thought. What a what a wild thought, and um, so sure enough, you know, we get back to the California, and you know, I get my my wife out there who can rally like a you know forever, and she can run everything down, and we just start playing these games. We start playing those games to twenty five, where it's third ball live, right? You drop and hit a ball, she hits it back, then my next ball, the third ball, it's live. We're on. Right. right. And uh, and we must have done hundreds of those games. And eventually I desensitized myself going, God, I think I could stay back. I think I could actually stay back <laughs> and, and rally and rally a few balls. So that was really a big, big time <laughs> epiphany moment for right. me is realizing that I got to I got to be able to do something else. I cannot be a one trick pony on this singles thing. So we've got some plays in this uh, in this in right. the series of seven plays that uh, um, right. will give you that confidence that based on these shot patterns that you don't, because I think with serve and volley a lot, we think, you know, we're forcing play so much, right? And part of the way we're forcing right. it is we're forcing it with a good first volley or we're, and even if that's not a winner, we're now up in there and we're forcing this guy to pass us. And, and some of these plays don't give you the same feeling. It actually feels like if I let this guy participate, he will he will oblige by giving me some free points and me not right. risking that I got to hit a great right. shot or I got to be in a comp in kind of a tough court position. So um, anyway, that's my story for the day. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, listen, guys. So I hope you enjoyed today's uh, stories about our singles. Aha moments. Uh, Jeff won two of his. I lost mine. So I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the win loss count is on our story so far after five of them. But guys, we really encourage you to pick up uh, this course that we've built. Been a lot of love into it. And um, we thought we'd actually launch this thing about what, four months ago. And it's right. taken us a while to kind of get the whole thing. But it's a beefy package. We got a lot of bonuses in there for you. But again, I encourage you to get over there before Sunday, 11 p.m. Pacific time zone, because at that point, this insane offer, it goes away. It goes Go away. See ya. So, guys, on that, um, Jeff, what do we want the fine folks to do right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe, let us know what you think down below. And today, Get over there to goldballhunting.com and dig in. That way, just get that shovel and start, start digging. Dig in. Dig in. Get out there today, everybody. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, more stories tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs>